Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Maya tutorial, I'm going to talk about the viewport. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about each of the menu items within the viewport menu. View, shading, lighting, show, options, and panels. In any of our panel views, we have a menu for our viewport. You can see that right up top here with our view, shading, lighting, show, options, and panels. And if I hit the space bar, what I can get to is the other panel views. And you'll see that we have the same options in each of these panel views. So I'm going to go back to perspective view. And I'm going to go up to view. And uh, before I do that, I want to put in some objects just so we can see things a little bit clearer. So I'm going to put it in a sphere, a cylinder, and a cone. And if I press F on the keyboard, we'll bring us right to our objects. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select our objects, press W, and just move a few of these out of the way. And I think what I'm going to do is bring in a cube instead of the sphere. Because there is one option I want to show you. And uh, I think it will be useful a little bit clearer if I use a, uh, excuse me, if I use a cube. Okay, so let's go up to our view. And you can see that we have a few options for our camera. So if I select camera, you can see if you go to your outliner and to uh, get to the outliner, you can click on this icon here. Or if you go up to uh, windows, you'll be able to go to Outliner here. And you can see that we have our camera perspective uh, selected. We can also lock camera. We can create a camera from view. So if I move uh, my camera around, my view in my viewport, and if I like where I am, where I'm at, I can select create camera from view. And you can see in the outliner that now we have a new camera created named persp1. And I can delete that. Now we can also cycle through our cameras. So in this case, you can see our, uh, our various views. This will be our top view and our side view. And then we can get back to our perspective view. Now we can also undo view change. So if I move to a, an area and then I want to get back to that view and just undo view. And I can redo that view as well. And we can also go to our default view that we had in our beginning. I'm going to uh, press F on the keyboard to bring us back to our objects. Now we can also view along our various axis. And I'm not going to go through each and every one of these, but I think you get the point. We can go through our various axis views. We can look at selection. So if I have our 
cone selected, I can go to view, look at selection. Now I can center view selection. So if I select my cube, I can center view that selection. These two views are uh, similar, two options. We have frame all, and we have frame selected. So if I can select my cone, frame selection, and that's our F key on our keyboard. And we have frame selection with children if we have our objects selected and we have a few objects that are uh, parented, we can also frame those selections as well. And we can align camera to polygon. And uh, this is why I wanted this cube. So I can go to, uh, if I right click and get to our marking menu, go to our face, select this polygon here on this cube, and I'll go back to view, align camera to polygon. You can see that that will align directly to this polygon. I think it's a little bit more clear if using a cube instead of one of these polygons on the cylinder. And now we have some predefined bookmarks. We have our perspective, front, top, right, left. And these are helpful when you have your various perspective views, excuse me, your various panel views. Let's say you are looking from your side, which is here, but you wanna look from the opposite side, you can choose that. Or for an example, if you're at your top view and you wanna look from your bottom and you need to make some adjustments uh, specifically in one of these orthographic views that are the opposite of what we have. Those are very useful. And we also have the ability to bookmark our views. And uh, we can do that by going to edit bookmark. And I'm just gonna name this one and then apply. Uh, excuse me, a uh, new, uh, new bookmark and then close. Now, when I move out of this view, pull out a little bit, I can go to my bookmark, go to camera view, and it can snap right to that view. It's very useful if you're using a specific view that you keep going back to for modeling. You can get to that real quickly and get back to that and start modeling just by going to that bookmark. So it's very useful. And I'm just gonna go to edit and I will select this and delete, close that. And we have our camera settings here. So if you need to change any of the settings and camera attribute editor, you can see your camera will be in this, in your attributes editor here. And we have our various camera tools as well. Now we also have image plane, which is going to be very useful when we're modeling and doing our character modeling. When we go to our import image, we'll be able to import an image in one of our panel views. So for an example, if we go to our front view and we have a camera, uh, excuse me, we have a character that we want to model, we'll bring that image into here and then we can start editing our models and using that as a reference. And we would be using the side view and in some cases the top and bottom view. So let me go back to perspective mode. So this is our view settings. Now we can also go to our shading, the next menu over, and it gives us a way of looking at our objects and let me view, pull out just a bit. And uh, I think what I wanna do is I wanna go to our default view. And just press F to get, just get back to our default, 
default view here. And I think I'm just going to move this guy back just a bit. So when we are looking at our objects within our viewport, we have some control on how they appear and how they're shaded. So you can see how our default shading is. But in some cases, maybe we just want to see our wireframe and we want to see the, the back of it, the back of our objects. This is a great way of seeing our whole objects in totality and its topology throughout the entire object. And we have our ability to go back to our sh uh, smooth shading all and we have our smooth shading selected. You can see how that works. Flat shade all. And you can see how you can see the individual polygons within these objects. That's why the cone and cylinder is pretty useful for displaying this. Oops. And we have flat shaded selected objects. And we have our bounding box. Now, bounding box is very useful when you want to see the outline of your object. And you'll be able to see that no matter what shape your object is, it will have this bounding box. This is very useful when you're adjusting the axis point of your object for rotation or manipulating the various part uh, of your object and where your origin of your gizmo is going to be. Now we can see wireframe on shaded. This is useful when you have your objects and even though you're not selected and you want to be able to look at the topology, uh, the, the frame and the, uh, the lines of your objects. Now X-ray is a way of giving you a semi-transparent view of your objects. So you can see the back of your object a little bit. You can kind of see how the lines are. And we have X-ray joints and X-ray active components. This will give us similar in those various um, component views. And we have back face culling, which when enabled allows us to quickly view and manipulate our objects, specifically when we have a lot of, a lot of topology and a lot of polygons, this will speed up the process a little bit. So we won't have those back faces shaded. So it helps improve performance. And we have smooth wireframe. And we have a various hardware texturing and hardware fog. Uh, so if you're using a spotlight and a spotlight fog, we'll be able to uh, view that and see that in the viewport. And we have our OpenGL legacy and default by OpenGL is enabled. And then we have apply current to all. So let's take a look at the next menu over. We have lighting, and this will be a way of our sh viewing our lighting within our viewport. So we have use all lighting, use selected lighting, uh, excuse me, lighting. And what we also have is use flat lighting and then use no lighting. So it just gives us a way of taking a look at, especially when we start adding in some of the lights into our scenes, it gives us a, a little bit level of control over how it's being viewed within our viewport. We'll just go back to use default lighting. Let me turn off our X-ray. Okay, so next, I want to go to the show. Now, 
what we have here is a way of showing the various components that we have within Maya. So for an example, if we have lights, we can turn off our lights. We can turn off, say, for an example, our grid. So we can turn off the grid. Uh, these are just ways of helping you sort of clear out and um, pinpoint various objects and options that you're bringing in, lights and cameras. A lot of times in scenes, when they start getting very complex, it can be a little overwhelming when you have deformers and, and uh, lighting and grids, and you have all these different objects being able to turn things off and uh, focus in on various uh, options and objects just gives you an, an easier way of you know, clearing out a lot of the, the stuff that's going to be in your viewport. Because it can get overwhelming when you have complex scenes, complex models, uh, you have lots of lighting and cameras and so forth. So this way you can then turn off these things and turn them back, back on very quickly through this, um, especially the grid. Sometimes the grid can be a little uh, distracting being able to just focus in on your model. And we have a few different options here, and we have our panels, which we can go through our perspective view and our uh, orthographic front, side, and top, and uh, our various layouts that we have. So this way, we can then take a look at, um, you know, a, a way of modeling. So maybe you maybe you want to model your front and side and being able to view those um, at the same time. So this way it kind of helps you as speed up your workflow a little bit to be able to quickly go through between each view. And you can do that here within these, um, excuse me, let's get back to our layouts and being able to go through all these different layouts very quickly so you can then model. And a lot of times you'll be working within like say the front view and the side view where you have your image plane set up and you can see how you're affecting the model in those views at the same time. So a lot of times if you get, sometimes you get too stuck on working within one view and then you go back to one of your other views and realize the work that you've been doing is not uh, correct. It may look correct in your, your front view, but won't be correct in your side view or your top view. So it's a good way of working to be, be able to take a look at your entire model as you're working so you can quickly uh, fix mistakes as you as you're moving around moving edges and moving your uh, vertices i put a link in the description to download project files you can also go to astronomic3d.com to download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that i've made so far thanks for watching